Hey there, Bard Flies. It's me, your uh, humble artistic director, Jeremy Eineckner. Good to see y'all. I don't actually see any of you, but hopefully you see me, and that means that this is working. Um, if you're look, watching this, then odds are you are here for uh, Boozy Bard Macbeth Raw. Yes, even though we are not able to do in-person shows, we just could not let uh, the October season go by and not do our what's basically become our signature show. We did this show for the first time at Best Place uh, six years ago, this very night. Ooh. Six doesn't mean what you think. <laughs> uh, yeah. So if you have caught any of our shows prior to this point, Yes, thank you, Jim. Spooky sounds. Will I do a Boris Karloff voice for the rest of the night? Who knows? I won't. Uh, for those of you who have been and watched some of our shows here live on uh, Facebook Live, you know how these things are going to work. But if you haven't, uh, we are going to pull, rather than uh, having the actors come up and pull names out of the hat like they normally do, I have two hats one of which has the characters' names, one of which has the actors' names, and then I will match them up. But in order to do that, I need to bring my players to the stage! And then they arrive, one by one by one. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I shall now acquire my various hats. One of which is, yeah, here's the one that's got the skeletons on it. It's spooky. Ooh. Doing the Boris Karloff again. Is that rolls or is that it's? <laughs> um, I think that's you guys. In fact, let's prove. Uh, Jim Donaldson will be playing. I can throw stuff on the ground because this is my house. The Porter. Yay, yeah. Jim. Ah. Everyone wants that roll. Nicole Alley will be playing Witch 3 and McDuff Jr. Andrea Radel Schrader will be playing Lord Ross. Joshua Bryan will be playing Duncan and Hecate. Sweet. <laughs> Joshua Klingman will be playing Lady Macbeth. Megan Closey, who is with us, uh, she used to do shows back in the day, and then she moved to Virginia, and now distance means nothing. <laughs> She will be playing Lord Malcolm. Woohoo! Joanna Amos will be playing Witch 2 and Lady Macduff. Oh, heck of gosh! I'm excited. <laughs> Andrew Butler, the Lord of the main character is still on the table. <laughs> And still is, because he's Banquo. Banquo. <laughs> Blake Baranowski will be playing oh. Lord Lennox. Tom Cawley will be playing... There it is. Lord M. <laughs> And I don't like know what's the left. Third time. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, Jason Myers will be playing Macduff. And I don't know what's left for Brian Bear. I think a witch is in there, right? Yep, yep. Witch one and the murderer. Hey, yeah, but which one am I playing? Exactly. <laughs> go, go. Don't make me mute you. <laughs> 
And that is your cast, folks. Now, for those of you who've never seen any of our shows at all, these players just learned who they're going to be playing. They did not know ahead of time. They did not hear ahead of time. They did not look at the script ahead of time. I told them to. They just chose not to. But, you know, hopefully after this many years, they've picked up a thing or two. Now, this is normally the part in the show where I explain that we do this because this is the way things were done in the time of William Shakespeare, because at the time that was true when we were, you know, performing in a beer hall. Obviously, Shakespeare didn't do things on Zoom. If you live today, he might have, but, you know, you know he, wrote, he wrote King Lear during a plague, so I'm sure he would have figured out some workarounds. So we're trying to do as best as we can to maintain that spirit of doing shows in these uh, less than ideal conditions. Um, so while I, uh, oh, but one thing that we do hold, still hold, even in these times when things are weird, is we do maintain our drinking game. Again, those of you who've never been to a Boozy Bart show, there is a drinking game that goes with every single Boozy Bart show. And I'm probably going to have to refill that before the act is over. I should slow down. Uh, the one for Macbeth is particularly special because it is every time Macbeth's name is said, we drink. And we do that because this play is considered cursed. For those of you who've never uh, heard this story, if you have, you know, go fix yourself a drink. It'll, be, it'll take that long for me to get through this. But for those of you who haven't heard it, when Shakespeare first performed this show uh, back in 15, uh, there, was, there was a scene that features the goddess Hecate, goddess of witches and witchcraft. And in it, it kind of explains that she's basically behind the whole thing, pulling all these strings to make all this stuff happen. After that night, after the first night of the performance, he was told he had to cut that scene because, you know, the English royalty was already in a bit of a sticky situation regarding religion. What with the whole Church of England thing going on, it wasn't, you know, there, there was a bit of a kerfuffle, as I believe they would say, in England regarding all that. So rather than make things worse by having the pagan goddess of witches and witchcraft uh, have this prominent role on, a, on an English stage, they just said, for the love of God, cut the scene. And because, you know, they can cut you if you don't do what they say, Shakespeare folded like a cheap suit and cut the scene. But it, maintain, it was maintained in the folio, so we still have that scene. However... It is a scene that, in order to do it properly, you need to have a uh, ten-foot-tall, uh, three-headed witch goddess snarling in flames. And it doesn't actually add that much to the plot, so it's often cut for time. And here's the thing. If there's someone that you don't want to piss off, it's a witch. And if there's someone that you really don't want to piss off, it's a goddess. And if there's someone you really, really don't want to piss off, it's the goddess of witches. So it is said that this play is cursed because she's pissed that her scene keeps getting cut. For 400 years, her scene keeps getting cut. We didn't do that. We put the scene back in because, as I said, it's still in the folio, so it still exists. So we know what it was. And... Also, traditionally, you're not supposed to say the name Macbeth in a theater because it's considered bad luck, because that's how pissed Hecate is. So in honor of that, we drink every time that we say that name to honor the curse. So whether someone is talking to Macbeth or about Macbeth, or even if just like Macbeth is in the room and he's addressed... <sighs> We drink. Thank you, Jim, in the chat. And uh, feel free to drop a drink in the chat every time you hear it as well. Chat, uh, for you guys, I believe should be located to your left, to your right. So, should be there. So, yeah, anytime you hear drink, 
drop us a line. Um, let's see. Normally, this is where I would talk. Oh, I, I suppose we do have one more show coming up. We will be doing this show again on the 28th. So a little bit closer to Spooky Miss Eve, if you like. We will do it there. And I encourage you to watch us again because it will be a completely different cast. Because that's how itchy we are to get back on uh, back on stage is we had to split it up into two shows to get everyone that wanted to on, on the screen. And let me tell you, we are itchy to get back on stage. We really do want to come back. Uh, but we do intend to continue to play it safe in that regard. I know we've gotten some messages asking um, if we would be willing to do like outdoor shows or something where it's uh, easier to see or where it's easier to be safe and distance, but you can still see us. But here's the thing to those suggesting that. We don't live together. With the exception of like maybe two or three people we're all completely separate from each other. So to do a show in person would be very, very dangerous for all of us. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, but please, uh, I do appreciate the thoughts in that you do want to see us again and we want to see you again. So, you know, in order to be able to see us again, do everything that is going to be necessary to help uh, bring this crisis to a swift end. You know, wear your masks, wash your hands, social distance, do what you have to do, eliminate any unnecessary leaving the house, do whatever it takes, because we're sick of it too. Not going to lie. <laughs> we are itchy to get back, just as itchy to get back as you are, if not more. <laughs> So I believe that should have killed enough time for all these folks. Yep, looks like we're all good. So let me bring up the script so I can read the stage directions because I am Thane of the Plot as this incredibly legal document declaring me a Lord of Scotland uh, represents. Oh yeah. It's legit. I'm a lord. Uh, and so with that, I say welcome to William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Raw. Act 1, Scene 1, A Desert Place. Thunder and lightning. Enter three witches. When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? Which two turns on her mic? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Drink. Hey, the air is foul, and foul is fair. Come on through, through the fog and the air. Fill the air. Exunt as we struggle through simultaneous line reading. Scene two, a camp near forest. Enter Malcolm, Duncan, and Lennox. Malcolm, you there? A witch has stopped my video. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail, brave friend! Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their heart. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel too for that. The multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him like Valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chaps and fixed his head upon our battlements. Oh, <laughs> valiant cousin, King of Scotland, Mark, 
No sooner justice hath with valor armed compelled these skipping kerns to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lord surveying vantage with furbished arms and new supplies of men began a fresh assault. This man there. Uh, this our captains, McBath and Berkwell? Uh, if I say so, if I must report, they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. Double except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds, or memorize another Golgotha. I cannot tell, but I, I am faint. My gashes cry for help. Ah, so well thy words come as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. I go get them to the surgeons, and we got great doctors, the best doctors. But who comes here? Enter Ross. God save the king. Whence comest thou, worthy thane? In Fife, great king, Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the thane of Cardor, began a dismal conflict. No more that thane of Cardor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title, Greek Macbeth. Drink, exunt. Scene three of Heath near Forest. Thunder! Enter three witches. A drum! A drum! Macbeth, Macbeth does come! Enter it's Macbeth and Bankwell. So fair and foul a day I've not seen. How far do you call the forest? What are these so withered and wild in their attire? Speak, <laughs> if you can. What are you? All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Glam. Oh, thank you. All hail, Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Cawdor. All hail, Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir, why do you start? You seem to fear things that you found so fair. Stay. You imperfect creatures, tell me more. <laughs> into the air, and what seems corporeal meant melted as breath into the wind. Would they have stayed? Who shall be king? <laughs> Please, and, and think a god or two uh, was not said so. To the same tune and words. Who's here? <laughs> Enter Ross and Lennox. The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy sight's success, and when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend, uh, it be thine or his. And we are sent to give thee from our master royal thanks, only to herald thee into his sight. And, for an earnest of a greater honor, he bade me, from him, call thee Thane of Cawdor, in which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What? Can the devil speak true? Uh, two truths are told, uh, as happy prologues to a swelling act of this imperial thieves. Uh, it cannot be ill. It cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success, commencing in a truth? I'm the Thane of God, or... If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth fix my hair and make my seated heart and knock at my ribs against the use of nature? You bank well. Look how our partners wrapped. If chance would have me king, why chance would crown me without my stir. New whores come with strange garments, cleave not for their mold, but what aid of use. Come what may, time and the hour run through the roughest day. Worthy Macbeth, we stay upon your picture. 
Ah, give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought with things forgotten. Kind gentlemen, your pains are registered where every day I turn uh, and leave to read them. Let's drop the quick king. And <clears throat> just make well. Think upon what we have chanced at more time. The ear term hath weighed on it. Let us speak our free hearts to each other. Very gladly. <laughs> Still bad enough. Come, friends. Exunt. Scene four. Forest, the palace. Flourish. <laughs> Enter Duncan and Malcolm. Is uh, execution done on Caldor? Are those in commission yet returned? My liege, they are not come back. But I have spoke with one that saw him die, who did report that he very frankly confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. Enter Macbeth, Banquo, Ross, and Lennox. Oh, what up? I have begun to plant thee, and will labor to make thee full growing, noble Banquo. That has no less deserved, nor must be known, no less to have done so. Let me unfold thee, and hold thee to my heart. There I grow, the harvest is thy own. <laughs> Sons, kids for things! And you whose places are the nearest. No, we will establish our state upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cucumberland. From hence to Intravenus. In Inverness. Do you? <laughs> the Prince of Cumberland. <laughs> well, that is a step on which I must fall down, or else, or leap. And for in my way, it lies. Uh, stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand. <laughs> Uh, yet let that be, which the eye fears when it's done to see. Exunt. Scene five. Inverness. Macbeth's castle. Enter Lady Macbeth, reading a letter. Any time. Take that. Glamis thou art, and Cawdor, and shall be what thou art promised. He thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue what that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. Enter the porter. Enter the porter. Jim! <laughs> Come in, your ladyship. <sighs> uh, your ladyship, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> uh, what is your tidings? Uh, 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 the king comes here tonight. Thou mad to say it. Is not thy master with him? Who so would have informed for preparation? Uh, sorry, sorry. I've got to look at my bloody script again. Um, so, so please, you, it, it, it is true, our thane is coming. Um, one of my fellows, at the speed of him, who, who almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. Exit the porter. 
the raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe top full of direct cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious vistings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. And I lost my spot. I shall find it very quickly. Come to... Come to my woman's breasts and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers. Whenever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief, come, thick night, and paw thee in the dunnest smoke of hell. Let my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Enter Macbeth. <clears throat> Great Glamis, worthy Cawdor, <laughs> greater than both, <laughs> by all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan dines here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall sun that morrow see. Your face, my fane, is as a book where men may read strange matters to beguile the time. Look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye. Your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all nights and days come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. <laughs> We will speak further. Only look up clear to alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. Exit Macbeth. Enter Duncan, Lennox, and Ross. Yo! Where's the fane of Cawdor? We coursed him at the heels, and had a purpose to be his purveyor. But he rides well. Fair, noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever. Right, yeah, uh, give me your hand. Conduct me to mine host. We love him highly. And shall continue our graces towards him. Graces. By your leave, hostess. Exunt. Scene seven, Macbeth's castle. Enter Macbeth. <laughs> if it were done when it is done, when it were well, it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequences and catch with his surcease success. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that this blow might be the be all and end all here. Uh, here upon this back and shoal of time, uh, uh, we'll jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here that we but teach bloody instructions, being taught, return to plague the inventor. 
this even-handed justice commence the ingredients of our poison sauce to our own lips. He is here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his strong subject, strong both against the deed, and then as his host, who should against the murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself. Uh, aside, uh, I have no spur to put aside of my intent, but vaulting ambition, which all leaps itself and falls on the other. Enter Lady Macbeth. Great. What's up, babe? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? Uh, hath he asked for me? No, you not. He has. Hear me out. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have brought golden opinions of all sorts of people, which would be worn now in their newest gloss, not cast aside so soon. Come on. What, was the hope drunk? Wherein you dressed yourself? Well, I'm drunk now. <laughs> As it slept since. And wakes it now to look so green and pale. And what did it so freely? From this time, such I, I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire? Wouldst thou have that which you esteemest the ornament of life and live a coward in thine own esteem? Letting I dare not wait upon, I would, like a poor cat, I the adage. Peace. I do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast wasn't then that made you break the enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man, and to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. Nor time nor place did then adhere to yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you, begun to this. If we should fail. We fail! But screw your courage to the sticking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains will I with wine and will sail so convince that memory the wander of the brain shall be a fume and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep, their drenched natures lie as in death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Bring forth men and children only, for thy undaunted mouth should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleeping to of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done it? Who dares recede it other? As we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death. I am settled and bend up each corporal angel to this <laughs> terrible feat. <laughs> Away and mock the time with fair show. 
False face must hide, but false heart doth know. Exempt. Oh, for me. Act two, scene one, the court of Macbeth's castle. Enter Banquo and Macbeth. Who's there? I am a friend. Hey, buddy. What? So not yet at rest? The king's abed. I dreamt last night of these three weird sisters. To you, they have shown some truth? I think not of them. Yet when we can entreat and the power to serve, we would spend it in some words on that business. If you would grant the time. At your kindest leisure. If you should cleave into my consent, then tis. It shall make honor for you. Well, so I lose none in seeking aug to augment it, but I shall keep my bosom franchise and allegiance clear. I shall be counseled. God, good repose the while. Thank you, sir, and the like to you. Exit Banquo. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Oh, come, let me clutch thee. <laughs> I may have thee not. <laughs> and yet I see thee still. Art thou not a fatal vision? Sensible to feeling as to sight? <laughs> I heard thou but a dagger of the mind. <laughs> uh, a false creation proceeding from the heat oppressed brain. Ah, uh, hey, see thee yet? In form as is palpable as this which I now draw. Uh, thou marshalest me the way I was going. In such an instrument I was to use. Slightly more pointy, but yeah, that would do the job too. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, what the fuck? Uh, uh, my eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on thy blade and dudgeon, gouts of blood, which was not so before. There is no such Thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Thou sure and grim set earth, hear not my steps. Which way they walk for fear, the very stones prate on my whereabouts and take the present horror from the time which now suits it. Whilst I threat, he lives. Words the heat of deeds to cold breath gives. Bong, bong, bong. I go. It is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan. <laughs> it is a knell that will summon thee to heaven or to hell. Exit. Enter Lady Macbeth. That which have made them drunk have made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark! Peace! It was the owl that shrieked. The fatal bellman which gives the sternest good night. Enter Macbeth. <laughs> my husband! I have done the deed! <laughs> so I'm not hearing noise. I did hear the owl scream and the crickets cry. Uh, did not well, you speak? Uh, when? Now! As, as as I descended. Why? Dark! Who lies in the second chamber? Malcolm? <laughs> this is a sorry sight. <laughs> Foolish thought to say a sorry sight. Uh, th there, one did laugh in sleep, and one cried, Murder! Uh, that did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and addressed them again to sleep. There are two lodged together. 
And one cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with the hangman's hands. <laughs> Uh, well, listen to fair. I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? I had most need of blessing, and amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways. So, it will make us mad. Uh, amen. Thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does the murder. Sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the rattle sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. Sword labors bath. Balm of hurt minds. Great nature's second course. She for no sure in life's peace still cried, See no more to all the house. Glums at the murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. <laughs> Who was it that thus cried? Why, worthy thane, you do unbend your noble, noble strength to think, so brain sickly of things. Go get some water, and wash this filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. <laughs> I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it, I dare not. A firm of purpose. Give me the daggers. Exit. Knocking within. What was that knocking? <laughs> How is it with me when every noise appalls me? Uh, what ends are here? Ah, oh, they pluck out mine own eyes. With the great Neptune's ocean, wash this blood clean from my hands. No, this my hand will rather the multitude seas in incarnation make the green one red. Re-enter Lady Macbeth. My hands... Of are your color, but I shame to wear the heart so white. Knocking. I hear a knocking at the south entry. Retire, we are retired to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy it is then. Hark, more knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us. To be watchers. To know my deed. To rest up to know myself. <laughs> Wake, Tumkin, with thy knocking. I would thou couldst. Exunt. <laughs> Scene three, the same. More knocking. Enter the porter. God help us. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were a porter of Hellgate, he should have all the turn in the key. Oh, knock, knock, knock. Who's there in the name of Beelzebub? Mm. Here's a farmer hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. <laughs> Come in, farmer. <laughs> Have napkins and now about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. <laughs> oh, knock, knock, knock. Who's there? The other devil's name. Oh. Mm. Faith. Here's an equivocator. I could swear in both scales 
against either scale and committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Mm. Oh, come in, equivocator! <sighs> oh. Knock, knock, never at quiet. What are you? Oh. oh, but this place is too cold for hell. I'll double water it no further. I thought to let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Oh. Anon, anon. I, I uh, pray you remember the porter. <laughs> Opens the gate. Enter Macduff. <laughs> And the Duff activates his mic. Himself, so I could understand what the hell he's saying. Was it so? Harry went to bed. Then you do lie. So it. Oh. Faith, sir. We were carousing till the second cock, sir. And drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does uh, drink especially provoke? Uh, Marry, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It uh, provokes the desire, but uh, takes away the performance. It, uh, uh, therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him mars him it sets him on and takes him off persuades him and mm, disheartens him makes him stand to and not stand to and uh in conclusion equivocates him in his sleep and giving him the lie leaves him have you got any drinks <laughs> Oh, my poor fool. It is thy master stirring. Enter Macbeth and Lennox separately. Yay. Ah, our knocking has awakened. Oh. Here he comes. Uh. Oh. What is this? Oh, good, good morrow, noble says. Uh, good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy Thane? Ah, uh, not yet. Oh. He did command me to, to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. Oh, I'll bring you to him. I'll make so bold to call, for it is my limited service. Exit Macduff oh, okay. and the porter. <sighs> oh, these leftovers are... So, mm -hmm. Bloody uh, Mary. Uh, oh, 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 that's what I was going to ask you. Uh, goes the king hence today? Oh, he does. He did appoint it so. The night, the night has been unruly where we lay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a rough night. <laughs> yeah, my young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Three into the gun, man. <laughs> oh, oh, don't laugh, don't laugh. Uh, horror! Uh, horror, horror, tell! Nor horror can I just conceive, nor name thee. Get, get to the point. What's the matter? C -c Confusion now hath made his masterpiece most sacri sac sacrilegious murder hath broke up the Lord's anointed temple and sold thence the life of the building. Oh, well, well, oh, well what is to you say? The life? In you, his majesty. Approach the chamber. Destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See and then speak for yourselves. Exit, Macbeth and Lennox. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason. Bong, Sick of the static sleep. Death's counterfeit. And look up on death bong, itself. Bong, up, up and see. The great tomb's image. Malcolm. Anquo! And so your graves rise up and walk like sprites. To countenance this horror, ring the bell. Bong, bong, bong. Enter Lady Macbeth, bong. 
what's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parlay the sleepers of the house? Speak, speak! O oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in, in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Only Banquo oh, enter, enter Banquo. Enter Banquo. Here, to, to fix there he is. Banquo, Banquo. Tab down doesn't help. Uh, a royal master's murdered. Whoa, alas! What? In our house? <laughs> Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I pray thee, contradict thyself and say it's not so. Re enter Macbeth uh, and Lennox with Ross. Uh, had I but died an hour before this chance, I'd had lived a blessed time. For in this instant, there is nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Ah, renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere lease is left the fault of Braga. Enter Malcolm. Uh, what is amiss? Ah, you are, and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Do you get my your metaphor? Royal, your royal again. father's murdered. <laughs> what oh, is that? shit, son. Oh, by whom? Uh, those of his chambers seem to have done it. Their hands and faces were badged with blood. So are the daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. Uh, they stared and were distracted. No man's life should be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? <laughs> but who can be wise? Yet uh, amazed, temperate, and, and furious, loyal, and neutral in a moment. Come on. No man, man. The expedition. Of my violent love, outrun the pauser reason. Here lay a Duncan, a silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature. For you're not really buying this, eh? Of a ruin's wasteful entrance there, uh, the murderers steeped in the cause of the trade. Their daggers on me with scoring on it was them. Who could refrain that had a heart to love and in the heart courage to make love known? Help me hence, oh. Oh, yeah. Look oh, no, I'm fainting. Uh -huh. oh. Look, look, oh. look to the lady as she faints. And when we have exposed the nagel threat in his head, the suffer in exposure, let us meet. The question of his most bloody piece of work. To know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand. And thus, against the undivulged pretense, I fight this traitorous malice. Let us presently on manly readiness. And meet in the hall together. Exempt. Outside Macbeth's castle. Enter Ross and Macduff. How goes the world, sir, now? I see you not. Is known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth had slain? Alas, the day, what good could they pretend? They were suborned. Malcolm, the king's son, are stolen away and fled, which puts upon them suspicion of the deed. Against nature, still thriftless ambition that will raven up thine own life's means, then tis most like the sovereignty will fall upon the breath. Oh, guys, is a two-bottle problem now. He's already named and gone to Schoon to be invested. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin, I'll to Fife. Exempt. Act 3, Scene 1. Forest, the palace. Enter Banquo. 
I'll have us a new king, Fodor, glamorous and all, and the weird women promised, and I fear that thou playest most foully for it. Yet it is said that I should not stand in thy posterity, but myself should go to the root and the father of many kings and come to the truth of them. Upon thee, Macbeth, in Macbeth and his speeches shine. Why, the verities of man are good. May they may my oracles as well, and set up my hope, but hush, no more. Senate sounds. <laughs> Enter Macbeth as king, Lady Macbeth as queen, Lennox, Ross, and the porter. Ah, uh, here is our chief guest. If he had been forgotten, it had been as a gasp in our great feast, and all thing unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir. Uh, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, for which my duties with my most indissolvable tie ever be knit. Uh, uh, ride you this afternoon? I, my good lord. Hmm. I wish your heart as swift and sure of foot. And so I do commend you to their back. Farewell. Exit Banquo. Sirrah, mm. a word with you. And attend those men our pleasure. Sorry, whose pleasure? Right, right. Uh, uh, they are my lord without the palace gate. Bring them before us. Exit the porter. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears in Banquo sick deep, and in his royalty <laughs> nature reigns in which would be feared. Tis much he dares. Who's there? Re-enter Porter with the murderer. Now, you, drunk mm -hmm. asshole, go to the door and stay there till we call. Exit the Porter. He's gonna pay me at some... No, I'm not. <sighs> Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, your highness. Oh, well then, now, have you considered my speeches? I won, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless when I do to spite the world. Hooah! So weary with disasters, togged with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance, commend it, or be rid on it. I like the way you think. You know Banquo was your enemy. Within this hour, at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the most perfect spy of time, the moment on it, what must be done, tonight, and something from the place away thought that I require clearness, and with him to leave no rubs nor botches of the work we saw of yourselves. I'll come to you anon. I am resolved, my lord. <laughs> I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. Exempt the murderer. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul flies tonight. If it find heaven, let it find it out tonight. Exempt. Scene three. A park near the palace. Enter Banquo. Oh, rain tonight. Let her come down, my little friend. <laughs> oh, 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 He's dead. And that's act one. <laughs> also, all away and say how much is done. There we go. <laughs> that is act one. So Banquo's dead. Um, so that means everything, every obstacle in Macbeth's path is gone. And everything's just going to be clear sailing from him from now on. Right? Right. I'm sure that's the case. Um, we're going to take a quick 10 minute intermission. And I'm going to get a much larger drink because I killed this after about scene three. 
Um, and when we come back, I do believe Brian has some tune skis for us. Yay, tune skis. Um, catch y'all then. I'm just going to mute this, you know. You can you can keep watching if you want. Now it's just going to be a blank screen. I can belly dance, Jeremy. Please don't do that. <laughs> no. Please don't do that.
hi everyone it's been 10 minutes and so i'm back now with a dark and stormy inside of my giant cthulhu glass <sighs> That should last me the rest of the show. Okay, so before we get back into the show, it is delicious, so thank you. Uh, before we get back into the show, if you've been to a Boozy Bar show in the past, you will know that this is the part where we bring Brian Bear back to the stage. Oh, hello. Hey. <laughs> Now, apart from, you know, doing our shows and being good in those, he's also a part of like 800 other groups, usually performing some sort of musical piano-y thing. And for us, he does that as well. He does a different song every night. And when I mean every night, I mean there's going to be two shows for this run. He's doing two songs. And with that, I, ta I tell Brian to take it away. song i will be playing lady macbeth just a reminder the drinking game still is in effect so do that please <clears throat> oh it disturbs you to see you my heart whining and wringing your hands oh how i wish i could be you because right now what we need is a man Barely even have to do anything Just dip down deep and find some guts All that I ask is that you become king And I don't want no ifs, hands, or buts <laughs> But no one's bread like Macbeth Thinks a head like Macbeth It's true, but he stabs his house guests In their beds like Macbeth now there's no time for worries or regrets. Just what needs to be done. Cause you've got to break eggs to make omelets. And by break eggs, I mean kill the king and his sons. No one slays like Macbeth or betrays like Macbeth. Cause whatever his lovely wife says like Macbeth. Now ignore that dagger, you're hallucinating. Go find your way up, Macbeth. The ends are just, no, the means are justified, but, but I don't care if you have to kill your best friend. No one's brave like Macbeth, or depraved as Macbeth, sends his rivals down into their graves like Macbeth. There's no need to be warm and friendly. Be cold, don't be stone cold as the author. You can ask King Lear, Richard, and Henry, and they'll tell you to be king. It takes ambition. No one boasts like Macbeth, gives a toast like Macbeth, makes to see their departed friends ghosts like Macbeth. As a spectre, I'm really quite terrifying. Back won't stop haunting Macbeth. And now all our foes are conspiring against us and hatching some damnable plot. It's time to get out there and fight them. And I'll join you as soon as I clean this damn spot. Just you will not come out. No one pouts like Macbeth, harbors doubts like Macbeth, has apparently gone and checked out like Macbeth. Don't you stand there nihilistically monologuing. Go kill Macduff. Macbeth. And that's Brian, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Brian, I know with the world being very weird right now, you know, uh, do you have anything else coming up? Um, I might, but I, it's not quite firm yet. Uh, okay. Around Halloween, there's going to hopefully be a, uh, a spooktacular comedy show slash fundraiser on Twitch. That's going to be with the Interchange Co-op, uh, formerly Ampersand Theater. Um, so there's going to be a show coming up. So I don't know. Pay attention to the Facebook page and maybe you guys can link it there. We'll sure, I'll do that. Um, otherwise, you can still listen to uh, Turn to Page Fun, the uh, uh, 
Choose Your Own Adventure Review Game Book Podcast. Review. It's on Stitcher and yes, review. We review the books. Yes. Uh, that's on. Uh, you can get it on Stitcher, iTunes, wherever you get podcasts. The episodes are still up there, and mm-hmm. you can go back and listen to it. Excellent. So, yeah, I think that's all I got. Um, anyone else got anything before we uh, go back to the actual show? Probably should have done this in the <laughs> beforehand. Yeah. We probably should have, but we didn't <laughs> because that's who we are. All right. Um, y'all had your chance. In that case, we're going to go back into half two of William Shakespeare's Macbeth Raw. Hall in the palace. A banquet is prepared. Enter Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, Ross, and Lennox. You know your degrees. Sit down and first and last the hearty welcome. Thanks, dear Your Majesty. Uh-huh. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. Our hostess keeps her state, but in best time we will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. For my heart speaks, they are welcome. Murderer uh, appears see. at the door. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. Both sides are even. There's blood on thy face. It's a good pop. It's bank wars, then. Oh. <laughs> Tis better thee without than he within. He is dispatched. My lord, his throat is cut. Wah! That I did for him. Oh, thou art the best of the cutthroats. Thou art the non pareil. Get thee gone. Stoop. Exit murderer. Stoop. My royal lord, you do not give the chair. The feast is sold. Oh, sweet remembrance, sir. Now good digestion wait on appetite. And health on both. Please, your highness, sit. The ghost of Banquo enters and sits in Macbeth's place. Ooh. <clears throat> uh, here we have now in our country's on a roof with the graced person of our Banquo present, who might rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance. His absence, sir, lays blame upon his promise. Please, your highness, to grace us with your royal company. Uh, but the table's full. Uh, there's a place reserved, sir. Where? Uh, here, my good lord. Uh, Whoa. what is the move, your highness? Which of you have done this? Why? Why? My lord! Uh, thou canst not say I did it! Never shake that gory locks at me! <laughs> Gentlemen, rise. His highness is... Sins, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth, pray you, keep seat. The fit is momentary. Upon a thought, he will again be well. If much you know him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? I am a bold one that dare look on that which might appeal the devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very painting of your fair. This is the air-drawn dagger which you said led you to Duncan. Oh, these flaws and starts, imposters to true fair, would well become a woman's story at the winter's fire, authorized by her grandam. Shame itself. Why do you make such faces? When all's done, you look but on a stool. See, see there. Behold, look. How say you? What? What care I? 
if thou canst not speak to. The ghost of Banquo vanishes. Ooh, ooh. What? Quite unmanned in folly. If I stand here, I saw him. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. <laughs> I do forget. Uh, do not muse at me, most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity, which, which is nothing. <laughs> and to those that know me, come love and help to all. Then I'll sit down. Uh, uh, give me some wine. Fill, fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend, Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here, tall and him, we thirst to all and all. Our duties in the pledge. Re-enter, Ghost of Banquo. Ooh. Oh, but equip my sight. Let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are perilous. Thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation on those eyes which thou dost glare with. Think of this, good peers. But as a thing of custom, tis no other. Only it spoils the pleasure of the time. What man dare I dare? Approach thou like the ragged Russian bear, the armed rhinoceros, or the hirkin tiger. Take any shape but that, and my firm nerves shall never tremble. The ghost of Banquo vanishes. Oh, why right, so? Be gone. <sighs> I am a man again. Pray you sit still. You have displayed the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Yeah. I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him at once. Good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Um. Oh, Mark. Sorry. Sorry. Good night, good night, your majesty, and better health. Attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. Exunt all but Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. It will have blood, they say. Blood will have blood. What's the night? Almost at odds with morning. Which is which? How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? Mm, I will tomorrow. And betimes I will to the weird sisters. More shall they speak. For now I am bent to know. I am in blood stepped in so far that I will wade no more. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. <laughs> oh, come. Oh, come. Come on, baby. Well, to sleep. We are yet but young. Indeed. Exempt. And come on. Scene five. A heath. Thunder. Enter the three witches meeting Hecate. Uh, why... How now, Hecate, you look angrily. Have I not reason? Bedlams as you are, saucy and overbold. How did you dare to trade and traffic with Macbeth in riddles and affairs of death? I, the mistress of your charms, the close contriver of all arms was never called to bear my part or show the glory of our art and which is worse all you have 
done has been but a wayward son. Spiteful and wrathful, who as others do, loves for his own ends, not for you. But make amends now. Get you gone, and let the kids of Acheron meet me on the morning till he will come to know his destiny. Your vessels and your spells provide, your charms and everything beside. I am for the air, the night I'll spend unto a dismal and to a fatal end. Great business must be brought ere noon upon the corner of the moon. There hangs a vaporous drop profound. I'll catch it ere it comes to ground. And that distilled by magic slights shall raise the artificial sprites, and by the strength of their illusion shall draw them on to his confusion, and spurn fate, scorn, death, and fear. He hopes both wisdom, grace, and fear. You all know security is mortal's chiefest enemy. Hark! I'm called my little spirit sea, sits in a foggy cloud, and strays for me. Exit, Hecate. <sighs> Which one turns ah, on her mic? Let's make haste, she'll soon be back again. Thrice the brindled cat hath mewed. I said once the hedge pig whined. Arthur cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poisoned entrails throw. Toad, that under cold stone days and nights has thirty-one. Swelted venom, sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron bubbles. Fillet of a penny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. I of mute and toe of frog. Uh, wool of bat and tongue of dog. I actually have all of these things. Adder's fork and blind worm's sting. It's a fake potato. Lizard's leg. And owlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hellbrot boil and bubble. Double, double, boil and trouble, fire burn, fire burn, cauldron bubble, scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, maw and gulf, of the raven, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, dig to the dark. Silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Dodger's lips. Finger of birth strangled, babe, ditch delivered by a drain. Make the girl thick, thick and slab, and there to a tiger's chaudron for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, 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 double and, and trouble. Fire, burn, and cauldron. With a baboon's blood. And the charm is firm and good by the pricking of my thumbs. Hold on, I've got a pin cushion. Wait, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, weather knocks. Enter Macbeth. Oh no, you secret black and midnight hags. I conjure you, by which you profess, however you come to know it. Answer me. You speak. And will answer. Say if thou'dst rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. <laughs> Call them. We'll see them. Under first apparition. <laughs> he knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but Get say thou head. not. <laughs> <laughs> Macbeth, beware, Macduff, beware that thane of Fife. Dismiss me, enough. Ah. 
Whatever thou art, for thy good caution, thanks, ye creepy motherfucker. Thou hast heart my fear right. Uh, but one word more. That he will not be commanded. Here's okay. another, more potent than the first. Thunder. Second apparition, a bloody child. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Had I three ears, I'd fear thee. But be bloody, bold, and resolute. Left to scorn the power of man. For none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. There is not come <laughs> Double sure and make a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell a pale hearted fear it lies and sleep in spite of thunder. Thunder! Arr! Third apparition. Arr! A well, child well, crowned with a tree in his hand. Be lion melted, proud, and take no care. Who shafts, who frets, who or where conspires are, Macbeth shall never vanquish be until uh -huh. great Burnham Wood to hide Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. <laughs> <laughs> that will never be. Who can impress the forest but the trees of fix his heart bound roots? Oh, sweet emboldments, high placed Macbeth. Shall live the least of nature. Uh, pay his breath. And to time and mortal custom. Yet, my heart throbs to know one thing. Just one. One, 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 I promise. Tell me if your art can tell so much. Not being unreasonable. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. Well, fuck you. I will be satisfied. Demining me this, and an eternal curse fall upon you. So. So. So his eye and greed is not Come like Enter the ghost of Banquo. Oh, not again. <laughs> Thou art too like the spirit of Banquo. Down. <laughs> Down thy other gold brown brow. Filthy hags. Why did you show me this? I'll say no more. Robot said, now I see it is true. For the blood vultures Banquo smiles upon me. The apparitions vanish! <sighs> what? Is it so? <laughs> I saw all this is so, but why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? A uh -huh. come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites, and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound, while you perform your antic round, that this king may kindly say our duties did welcome pay. And I said, hey, yeah, 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 hey, yeah. Really the music, the, the, the witches me. dance and then vanish. The witch is vanished. Where am I? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed at the calendar. Come in without there! Enter Lennox. Uh, what's what's the grace's will? Saw you, the weird sisters. No, my lord. Can they not buy you? No, indeed, my lord. <laughs> Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horses. Who was it that came by? Um, just two or three, uh, 
Mm -hmm. Lord, that bring you word. McDuff is slept in. Let to England. Ah, my good Lord. <laughs> the castle of McDuff, I will surprise. Seize upon Fife. And give the edge of the sword, his wife, his babes, and all the unfortunate souls that trace him in his line. Exunt. Scene two, Macduff's castle. Enter Lady Macduff, her son, and Ross. What have you done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. It was madness. What our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You do not know whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom. To leave his wife, to leave his babes, his mansion, and his titles in a place from whence himself does fly. He loves us not. He wants the natural touch for the poor man. The most diminutive of birds will fight her young one in her nest against the owl. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little as the wisdom where the fight so runs against all reason! My dearest cuz, I pray you, school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and, and best knows the fits of the season. I, I dare not speak much further, but cruel are the times. <clears throat> when we're traitors, and do not know ourselves when we hold rumor from what we fear, yet know not what we fear, but float upon a wild and violent sea each way and move. I, I take my leave of you. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. You see this? You see this? Fathered he is, and yet he's fatherless. <laughs> I am so much a fool. Should I stay longer, it would be my disgrace and your discomfort. I will take my leave at once. Exit Ross. Oh, so your father is dead. And what will you do now? How will you live? <sighs> To mother, blood with worms and flies. With what I get, I mean, and, and so do they. Oh, poor bird. My father is not dead, for all you're saying. Yes, yes, he is dead. How will that do for a father? Nay, how will you do for a husband? Oh, oh. Why, I can buy me 20 in any market. Well, then you'll buy him and sell him again. Oh, thou speakest with all thy wit, and yet it stays with wit enough for thee. <laughs> was my father a traitor, mother? And he was. What's a traitor? Why, one that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Everyone that does so is a traitor. And you must be hanged. And, and must they be hanged and that swear and lie? All of them. Every single one of them. Who has hanged them? Well, the honest men. Then the liars and swearers are fools. For there are liars and swearers and out of beast. And honest men and hang them up. Oh, poor Bradler, how thou talkest. Oh, Enter the murderer. Dies. 
back here. Exit, I Lady Macduff. <laughs> Exit the murderer following her. England, before the King's Palace, enter Malcolm and Macduff. Ah, let us seek out some shade, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast the mortal sword, and like good men, bestride our downfall and birth them. Each new morn, new widows howl. New orphans cry, new sorrows strike on the face. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, it was once thought honest. You've loved him well. He had not touched you yet. Mm, I am not treacherous. I know that, but Macbeth is. Be not offended. I speak not as an absolute fear of you. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps, it bleeds, and each new day a gash is added to her wounds. And let's not talk about Brexit. <laughs> we don't need to worry about Brexit. Mm. Not in the legions of hard hell can come a devil more damned than evils. I grant him bloody luxurious, avarice, false, deceitful, sudden, malicious, smacking of every sin that has a name, but there's no bottom, none in my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids, and my desire, ooh, skipped a line there, <laughs> the matrons and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust, and my desire, all continent impediments, would overbear that did oppose my will. Better Macbeth than such an one to reign. Boundless intemperance in nature is a tyranny. It hath been the untimely emptying of a happy throne and a fall of many kings. But fear not yet to take upon you what is yours. You may convey your pleasures in a spacious plenty. We have willing, if willing dames enough. With this there grows in my most ill-composed affection such a staunchless avarice that, were I king, I should cut the nobles for their lands, desire their jewels and this other's house, and more having would be the sauce to make me hunger more that I should forge quarrels unjust against the good and the loyal, destroying them for their wealth. Scotland, Scotland. Oh, well, if I were son once such fit to govern, speak, I am as have spoken. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> to govern. <laughs> no, not to live. Durable with an untitled tyrant, bloody separate. But shalt thou see thy wholesome days again, since that the truest issue of thy throne, by his own interdiction, stands accursed, and does blasphemy his breed? Thy royal mother was a most sainted queen, the queen that bore thee, oftener upon her knees than on her feet. You know, died every day she lived. Well, these evils thou repeatest upon thyself have banished me from Scotland. And on my breast, they hope, thy hope ends here. Macduff, 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 Macduff. This noble passion, child of integrity, hath from my soul wiped the black scruples, reconciled my thoughts to thy good truth and honor. Devilish Macbeth, by many of these trains, has sought to win me into his power, and modest wisdom plucks me from over-incredulous haste. But I am yet unknown to woman, never was forsworn, scarcely have coveted what's mine own, and no time broke my faith, would not betray the devil and to fellow his delight, no less truth in life. Why are you silent? Such... Welcome and unwelcome things at once, tis hard to reconcile. Enter Ross. Stands Scotland where it did. Alas, poor country. 
Well, uh, what's the news, grief? What's the haps? That of an hour's age stop hiss the speaker. <laughs> Each minute teams a new one. How does my wife? Why? <clears throat> well? And all of my children. Well, too. The tyrant has not batted at their peace? No, um, they were well at peace when I did leave them. Um, but I have words that would be howled out in the desert air where hearing should not match them. What concern there? In main part, concerns you alone. If it be mine, keep it not for me. Quickly, let me have it. Let your ears not despise my tongue forever, which shall possess them with the heaviest sound that ever yet they heard. Your castle is surprised. Your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. To, to relate the manner where on the quarry of these murdered deer at the death of you. Oh, merciful heaven. My children too. Wife. Children, servants, all that could be found. I must be from thence, but my wife killed too. I have said. Be comforted. Let's make medicines a great revenge to cure this deadly grief. There's no children. All of my pretty ones. Did you say all? <laughs> oh, hell okay. All? What, all of my pretty chickens spend their damn in one fell swoop? Come on, get your head in the game. Dispute it like a man. I shall do so. I cannot be, but remember such things were that were no. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Be this the wetsome of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart. Enrage it. Oh, I, I could play the woman with mine eyes and brag her with my tongue. Gentle heavens, cause short all intermission, front to front. Bring, bring now this fiend to Scotland and myself within my sword's length, said him. If he escape, heaven forgive me too. Now you're talking my language. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth drink is ripe for the shaking. Exunt. Act five, scene one, Dunsinane. Anteroom in the castle. Enter Lady Macbeth. Yet, here's a spot. Out, damn spot! Out, I say! One, two, why, then? Tis time to doot. Hell is murky! Fie, my lord, fie a soldier, and a feared! What need we fear who knows it, when none can call our power to account? Yet he would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him. The thane of fight had a wife. Where is she now? What, will these hands ne'er be clean? No more, oh, that, my lord. No more, oh, that, your mar all with this starting. Here's the 
smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh! 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 Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. I tell you yet again, Banquo's buried. He cannot come out on grave. To bed. To bed. There's knocking at the gates. Come! Come, come, come! Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. To bed. Exunt. Enter Macbeth and attendants. Bring me no more reports. Let them fly all. To burn a wood remove to Dunsinane. I cannot change with fear. Oh, what's the boy Malcolm? <laughs> Was he not born a woman? Uh, uh, the spirits that know all mortal consequences hath pronounced me thus. Fear not, Big Beth. No man that's born of woman shall Air have power upon thee, then fly false things and mingle with the English epicures. Enter the porter. <laughs> the devil damn thee, black thou cream faced loon. Where goes that goose look? There's, there's t- 10,000 geese, villain. Soldiers, sir. Go prick thy face over red thy fear. Those linen cheeks of thine are counselors to fear. What soldiers? Wayface? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Exit the porter. I am sick at heart. This will push, will cheer me ever, or deceit me now. I have lived long enough. Enter the porter. What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? Um, all is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. Mm. Give me my armor. It is not needed yet. I'll put it on. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me my armor. Oh, I will not be afraid of death and bane. To Burnham Forest, come to Dunsinane. Exactly. It rhymed. Scene four. The country near Burnham Wood. Enter Malcolm, Lennox, and Macduff. Cousins! I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe. What wood is this before us? Um, uh, um, Do you have Google Maps on? Uh, no, just paper. Uh, oh, okay. Hold on. Uh, the wood of Burnham. Burnham. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I should know this. Uh, let every soldier hew down a bow and bear it before him. There we shall shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery air and report on us. Pretty cool, right? Shall be done. That our just censures attend the true event and we are industrious soldiership. The time approaches that with due decision make us know what we shall say and what we shall owe. Though speculative, their unsure hopes relate, but certain issues must arbitrate toward which we must advance the war. Exunt, marching. (laughs) Scene five, Dunsinane within the castle. Enter Macbeth. Hang out our banners to the outward walls. 
The cry is still, <laughs> they come! Our castle's strength will laugh us, cease to scorn. Here, let them lie. The famine and the egg we eat them up. <laughs> Were not they forced with those that should be ours? We might have met them, therefore, feared to feared. I mean, I did just shaved this morning, so for quite yeah. And feeds them backward home either way, beardless or not. That was Lady Macbeth, by the way. What is that noise? <laughs> Enter the porter. Uh, is the cry of women good, my lord? Oh, oh. <laughs> I have almost forgot the taste of fears of money. I have sucked full of horrors. <laughs> Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. <laughs> she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. So tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. Mm. Creeps on this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out. Out, brief candle. Life? Is but a walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot <laughs> full of sound and theory. Signifying nothing. <coughs> Thou come to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. Uh, gracious, my lord, uh, I should report that which I say I saw, but I know not how to do it. Well, say, <coughs> sir. Uh, as I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon me thought the wood began to move. Liar and slave! Oh, let me endure your wrath. If it be not so, within this three mile may you see it coming, I say a moving grove! <laughs> if thou speakest false, upon the next tree I shall hang thou alive. Get it? The famine cling thee! Arm! Arm and out! Ring the alarm bell! Oh, blow wind! Come, rat! <laughs> At least we'll die with harness on our back! Exunt! Scene 6, Dunsinane before the castle. Enter Malcolm, Lennox, and Macduff! Now, hear enough. Your leafy screens throw down and shoe like those. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, you right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff, and we shall take upon what else to remains to do according to our order. Very well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight? Let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous hair, blood, and death. Exunt. Scene seven, another part of the field. Alarms enter Macbeth and Lennox severally. 
<laughs> oh, they have tied me to the stake. I cannot fly, but fair like I must bear the course. Who is he that's not born of woman? Such a one I am to fear, or none. Hey, what's thy name? Oh, thou wouldst be afraid to hear. No, <laughs> so thou callst thyself a hotter name than any in hell. Oh, well, wait for it. My name is Macbeth. Devil himself could not pronounce a title more hateful to mine ear. Oh, no, nor more fearful. Thou liest a poor tyrant, with my sword I'll prove the lie thou speakest. Oh, yeah? yeah. <laughs> thou wast born of a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Adore thy smile at, low weapons, laughter scorn, brandish my man of a woman born. <laughs> Lennox uh, dies. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, why should I play the Roman fool and die by mine own sword? Once I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Enter Macduff. <gasps> Anytime, Macduff. There you go. Turn him around. <laughs> Of all men else, I have avoided thee. Oh, but get thee back! My soul is too charged with blood of thine already. I have no words! <laughs> my voice is in my sword. Now, brother, your villain, now terms to give thee out! Fight! 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 Oh, fight! Oh, no. Oh, come on, come on, come on, go, go, oh, you got, okay, oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, come on, oh, oh now you get, oh, and now you get the, oh, right in the jewels, <laughs> thou loosed labor, I bear a charmed life, for one which must not yield, to one of women born. I can't be killed by anyone born of woman. Oh, Get it? Oh no. It's so I can still hear you. I became unplugged. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the words you were going to say before you uh -huh. Oh, thou Lewis's labor. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. <laughs> Are you laughing? What's funny? <laughs> what? What? Come on! Stand charm! And the thing to whom thou hast served. Tell thee, Macduff. Macduff was from his mother's womb. And time they were. Okay. A technicality. <laughs> a curse be that tongue that tells me so. For it hath cowed my better parts of a man. And be these juggling fiends no more believed that pelter with us in double sense. Okay. okay. <laughs> that keep our words and promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield, Calvin. The fuck you say? Live to be the... I say yield, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rare monsters are, painted. And under writ, here may you see thy. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and to be baited with the rabble's curse. So Burnham would would to become to Tunsonade, and thou of course, being of no woman born because I guess C sections count as a fucking loophole. Yet I will try the rest before my body. I set my warlike shield Leon Macduff and damned be he that first cries hold enough hey they exit fighting okay got it out and stop Holy shit. Malcolm and Ross enter. And they will not take our freedom. Oh, sorry, wrong movie. Okay. I would miss the friends we miss we were safe arrived. Some must go off, and yet by these I see so great a day as this is cheaply bought. No kidding. Malcolm er, Macduff is missing. Re-enter Macduff yes. with Macbeth's head. Oh, that was nasty. Hail, King, for so thou art. Behold, where stands the usurper's cursed curse head. Thy time is free. I see thee the past with thy kingdom's peril. Girl. Let us speak by salutation with our minds. Those whose I desire Alone is mine. Hail, King of Scotland! Hail, King, King of Scotland! Of Scotland. <laughs> and that's the show, folks! <laughs> da -da 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 -da. All right. Uh, bring all everyone back out on stage for one more round of saying who they were. Okay, tonight as the porter, Jim Donaldson, as King Duncan and Hecate, uh, Josh Bryan, yeah. as Lennox, uh, Blake Baranowski, as Ross, Andrea Randall Schrader, as Banquo, Andrew Butler. As which one, uh, Brian Bear? As which two, Joe Montana? And as which three, Nicole Alley? As Macduff, Jason Meyer? As, uh, do I have everyone else? Yes. As Lord and Lady Macbeth, Tom Colley, and Joshua Klingman. Oh, as uh, Malcolm, the new king of Scotland, Megan Clossy. There, now I've got everyone. I'm, uh, my name is Jeremy Anikner. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I know we sure as hell did. Uh, hope to see you guys again on the 28th when we're doing this again with all new people. Hooray. And then after that, who the hell knows? Because... You'd be surprised how much work actually goes into these Zoom shows. But like I said, we're itchy to perform. So who knows? Christmas time is sooner than you think. And we might get that itch to do it again. Um, hope you, Again, hope you guys had a great night. Uh, be sure to like our video and be sure to follow us to make sure you see everything else. Uh, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And to steal a line from this one lady on the news that I like her sign-off line. Uh, stay positive and test negative. Catch y'all later. Bunch of drunks with a weird hobby. That you know. We are a bunch yep. of drunks with a weird hobby. Bunch of drunks with a weird hobby.